Shabbat shalom, everyone. My name is Marlene Schwartz and Karen Goldberg, um, and I were co-chairs of the Rabbi Search Committee. And I was looking at my calendar and realized it was exactly one year ago yesterday that our committee had its very first meeting. Um, and uh, three and a half months ago on July 1st, Rabbi Moss joined us here at TBT. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the transition committee who have worked to welcome Rabbi Moss and Rabbi Susan Landau Moss to our community. And maybe they can just raise their hands. Um, the people who are, are here in the room, um, Gary Damiano, Bob Handelman, Dan Jacoby, Jill Lesage, Tanya Oaks, Jen Silva, Lauren Sturman, Leslie Sood, and Stu Weinzimmer. And Thank you, <laughs> they deserve that. Um, each of you have brought your unique gifts and talents to support this important milestone for Temple Beth Tikva. So it's been a very busy three and a half months for Rabbi Moss, in addition to the expected challenges of buying a house, moving to a new town and starting a new job. He has faced the additional hurdles of doing this during a pandemic and a major construction project. Since July, he has led services on Zoom on the beach, on the Madison Green, in the parking lot at TBT for some code, at Woodwinds, and tonight, I believe for the first time, in a barn. <laughs> but what's become clear, not only during the last few months, but really during the past year and a half, is that although it's true that Temple Beth Tikva, the place, is located in Madison on Route 79, just off of exit 61, it is also true that Temple Beth Tikva, the community, is located wherever we are. So to all of you here in the barn, all of you joining on Zoom, welcome to Shabbat services at TBT. And now I'll pass it on to Karen. So I have a blessing for you. Dear God, thank you for bringing Rabbi Moss to Temple Beth Tikva. Please provide for him health and happiness. Help him find contentment in our community. Allow him to form the bonds to help lift us up in our times of joy and our times of desperation. May he have the strength to continue to deal with the hardships that are inherent in his calling. Give him the humility to know when he needs help and the friends and family whom he can lean on. Continue to give him the wisdom to teach and the empathy to love and care for us, his congregation. Give him the hope to continue to know that our best days are ahead and the good humor to laugh when things don't work out exactly as planned. May he have peace in his heart, even during the challenges. May he continue to have love in his life. 
may he have satisfaction in his work. And finally, Rabbi Moss, may God's force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, how special is that? Is it my turn now? Yes, let's do that. Susan, I have been asked to call you up to please light the candles. I have to say that it's a wonderful thing to have uh, such gifts in our congregation in so many ways, but one of which is liturgists within our congregation who write prayers, who inspire us through their own blessings. And so that was very special. Thank you both. We begin our service with the lighting of the candles on page 120. My roots My special to have our TBT choir for this special occasion and our Kabbalat Shabbat service on page 132. Righteousness, love, and light here tonight, very palpable and very present. say that uh, this is the service um, so far in my time as your rabbi that I have both the most and the least knowledge of <laughs> because so many people have been planning and putting this together and uh, and what a beautiful gift for my eyes to see all of the talented people in this room who have labored to make uh, to make this a special evening who have come uh, from, from far away, who have come from nearby, uh, who I have known over the, these last few months or many years, uh, or, you know, who are new friends and, uh, and, and I'm meeting you for the first time. And I especially also wanted to give a greeting to those on Zoom. Thank you, Rabbi Friedman, for trying to adjust that sound thing. I tried that myself. I guess we're getting a little, a little feedback or other sound on this side. Um, but nevertheless, the most important sound, of course, is of our voices together. Um, raising them in song in this beautiful space. And so uh, we'll continue that singing together with Lecha Dodi, page 138 and 139. When we get to the final verse, we'll invite you to please rise and face the entrance as we symbolically 
welcome Shabbat as the sun goes down and Shabbat presence enters our lives. One of the more potent feelings uh, in an evening like this is a feeling of connection to generations, to history, to our identity as a community. And so uh, I just wanted to point out that we do have um, a couple of special guests who represent the community um, and, and the continuity of community and my rabbinate in this community here with us, including um, Rabbi Hesh Sommer, uh, and Rabbi Offner, who will be joining us via a video clip. And, uh, and also, I'm very happy that um, Rabbi Michael Friedman from Temple Israel in Westport will be here uh, delivering the main remarks this evening. We're very glad that you're here, and I personally am honored by your presence. So, Shalom. And speaking of Shalom, we'll sing Shalom Aleichem, peace be upon you, O ministering angels, on page 142. I have to sit down for this one.
Corey wears many hats in this congregation. <laughs> such a beautiful and haunting melody. I love that melody. Thank you, Cantor. Thank you, Corey, for the beautiful music. Wearing many hats indeed. We'll continue in our service with Ma'ariv with our evening service, beginning on page 146. Please rise if you're able to do so for the Baruch Hu.
page 148. We'll read together in English. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzvaot is your name. Ever-living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on evening. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ma'ariv Aravin, page 152, Shema. Shema Yisrael. can have a seat. Page 154. <laughs> Turn to page 158 and continue with our freedom song, Micha Mocha. God, who is like you among all gods who are worshipped, who like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonders. And if you haven't started singing along tonight with us, this is a perfect chance to start. I hope you're feeling warmed up.
Thus it is said, Adonai redeemed Jacob from a hand stronger than God's own. Praise are you, Adonai, for redeeming Israel. Baruch atah Adonai, Ga'al Yisrael. Happy occasions. Shabbat being the festival of happiness. Yismechu. It calls for some happy singing. And so I see we have a special surprise. I really was trying not to look too closely at the special things going on in the service. So we're very happy to have Rick Calvert and Stephen Amy Epler Epstein. And I'm going to get out of the way again. We're on page 162. gift. What a beautiful piece of music. I understand that's a Rick Calvert original and and uh, and was the world premiere at TBT. Uh, yes. Yeah. And it's older. <laughs> well, it sounds fresh and beautiful. And one of the cool things was being able to see people singing along with it, uh, at least the people whose faces I could see when their mouths were moving on Zoom. Uh, but uh, thank you for the gift of that beautiful, beautiful music. How special is that? Well, we're at the Amidah section of our service. Here's a chance to say hello for a brief while to the generations that came before us. It's an encounter um, where we really do look back at what we inherit and uh, think back of our, uh, to our ancestors, those who came before, of course, in the mythical sense of our patriarchs and matriarchs, and, and also, of course, in the sense of realizing uh, the continuity and the role that we play in this congregation, in this place and the responsibility and privilege inherent in that certainly will be on my mind. 
in these prayerful moments. Damida begins on page 164. We invite you to please rise and we'll have a moment of silent meditation later as well. Adonai sefatai tifta ufia gita hilateha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu, Elohe Avoteinu, Veimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, El Elkon. Go mel chasadim tovim, ve konei hakol, ve zocher chaste avot ve imahot, ume vi gula livnei v'nei ha'am, lemaan shemo ve ha'avam. Melech ozer u'moshia u'magain, baruch atah Adonai, Magin Abraham, Bezrat Saram. Atagi bor leolam Adonai, Mechai he hakol atarab lehoshia. Mashif haruah, umarit hakashem. Mechalkel chayim bechesed. Mechai he hakol berachamim rabim. So make no flim, pero fe holim. Umati asuvim. Umekahaye memunato. Li shine a bar. Mi hamoka bagilurots. Umi domelo. Melech me me. Baruch <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai, ha'el ha'kadosh. A rabbinic proverb teaches that speaking is worth one coin and silence is worth two. I always found that this was sort of a psychological adaptation. Maybe the lady doth protest too much from the rabbinic culture but it conveys a lot of wisdom about the opportunities and stillness and quiet. And so for just a moment, we'll have an opportunity for silent reflection and meditation. You can search in this book for the words that speak to us between here and page 180, or simply take a moment to close our eyes and say the prayer that we most need to in this space. I invite you to take all the time you need and feel free to have a seat when you are ready.
I was at a wedding last weekend and the officiant um, very skillfully shared that with every symbol under the chuppah and every act within the wedding, there are many different explanations and such is the nature of symbols. They are polyvalent, they're open to interpretation, they are mysterious and our experience of them might change uh, from one season in our lives to the next. But she shared the common understanding, a common understanding of the breaking of the glass, which is based on a uh, comment of our interpreter Rashi to a story in the Talmud, which is that even in the moments of joy and celebration, we take a moment to pause and remember that there is brokenness in the world. And, uh, and we feel it in our, in our lives, in our homes perhaps, in our hearts tonight, that there are those who are ill and suffering in our world. Um, that we may be caring for somebody who is in need of healing, or we ourselves may be. And so we take a moment to name them or to hold them in our hearts, this moment of Misha Berach. First, our temple members, April Diamato, Norma Diamond, Henry Gettenberg, Sandra Hyman, Marsha Jacoby, Tom Louie, Josh Lipschitz, and Sabrina Maurer. And our loved ones, Connie Ambrosino, Stephen Verdi, Harriet Cohen Haggerty, Claire Fenton, Mickey Bart, Jay Fliss, Herman Meha, Sue Yaris, Mark Ostriker, Sydney Scher, Bart Young, Soraya Casey, Mary Beth Malone, Sarah Beggs, Sarah Bryant, Helen Dreyfus, Jennifer Murphy, Lillian Wasserman, Harold Asher, Seth Axelrod, Jordan Lustig, Betsy Carlson, Ben Peck, Mark Potter, Martha Potter, Gloria Jennings, 
Sabine Meyer, Gloria Newell, Lois Smith, Mary Beth Malone, Michael Bruce Ensign, Joan Sidney, Ira Weiss, Betsy Powers Brown, Shannon Charette, Maris McNeil, and Chuck Peugeot. If there are others who are in need of healing who you'd like to add publicly to our prayers, I'll invite those of you who are here in person to feel free to do so as I come to greet you around the room. Or if you're on Zoom, we certainly invite you to add that person's name into the chat right now and all of those names will be recognized for this healing prayer. Anybody from Misha Vera? David Baggish. There's the dirt line that he is just in Schroeder. For all of them, all those we hold in our heart, we pray that healing may be possible. And if not, that they know comfort and peace soon in days to come. Page 371, Misha Misha. We've come to the installation piece of our service. Um, I'd like to invite up actually to, I don't think anyone's speaking at this point, um, Rabbi Susan Lando Moss and Jennifer Silva, who are going to open this service um, with a musical selection. And Susan, I don't know if you wanted to say more about that. Okay, great. <laughs> Come on up. Yeah, no.
So I think next we have some reflections from Rabbi Offner uh, via video. So you'll see it on the screen over here. No, video. Rabbi Moss, what a pleasure and an honor it is to say Baruch Haba to you. Welcome to this beautiful village that we affectionately call TBT. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this holy moment when TBT gathers together to celebrate you and to rejoice at the fact that you are now TBT's rabbi. We celebrate the sacred partnership between you and the members of the congregation. We celebrate your exuberance and your vision and your passion for Torah. As TBT's most recent past rabbi, I get to stand right next to you in the chain of rabbinic tradition. I'm thrilled to stand at your side as you lead TBT into the great future that is before us. When I first came to TBT, a little story to share. Before I had ever been hired, I went into the sanctuary and I stood before the open ark. I reached in and I took out a Torah scroll and I held it in my arms. Holding that scroll was a way of holding all of Jewish tradition and all of the Temple Beth Tikva community together in my arms. It was a good fit. But yes, it became time to pass that Torah along to the next generation. And so with all of my heart and soul, I am delighted to pass it on to you. Though I am not physically present this evening to pass that Torah, know that I am passing it nevertheless, metaphorically, and with great, great joy. As I do, I'm also thrilled to acknowledge that not only does TBT have a new rabbi, but now, Nancy and I have a new rabbi too. We look forward to learning from you and to being part of your congregation. There's one more chain of tradition that I'm thinking about right now. And this time it's not the chain of the passing of the Torah, but we'll call it the chain of the Nigun. Rabbi Moss, I know that you love a good nigun. So I think you will also love this little story about what the nigun has to teach us. A leading expert 
in Jewish mysticism reached out to a professor of ethnomusicology, had to be like at a prestigious university like Yale, I think. And the mystic asked the ethnomusicologist, how is it that the nigun, a simple wordless melody, has such spiritual power? And the ethnomusicologist did important research as an ethnomusicologist is wont to do and made a conclusion. He didn't find anything particularly special about the nigun. Nothing, said the Jewish mystic. I think you don't understand. I'll tell you the secret of the nigun. You see, every note in a nigun looks at the note that came before it and says, thank you for being my teacher. And every note in a nigun looks at the note that comes after it and says, I give you permission to be even more beautiful than I am. Rabbi Moss, we await all the beauty and all the wonder that is to come in the days and years ahead. May God bless you and your wife, Rabbi Susan Landau Moss. And may God bless the sacred community that with you at its helm is Temple Beth Tikva. Mazel tov. Ordinarily, I wouldn't say thank you to a video clip, but I think I saw Rabbi and Nancy somewhere on the screen. There they are. All right. Well, thank you for your very touching message and consider this a, a hug from afar. Uh, thank you so much for the, the beautiful words and the perfect story, which I'm sure Cantor and I will use again and again. That's a lovely one. Thank you very much, Rabbi. Now we're very happy to welcome uh, Rabbi Hesh Summer. You want me up here? Or do you want me to sit down? No, I want you up here. Okay. Okay. Let me hold it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Rabbi Moss, it is truly an honor. I got it. It is truly an honor to stand here with you and with you holding this special Torah, one of Temple Bestikva's Torah scrolls. This one in particular, I, wa I wanted you to hold as we, you and I had spoken about this evening. It says, as you so well know, um, one of my favorite stories from the Talmud in Brachot 64a, that it says the teachers of Torah, you and those who came before you are the ones who bring shalom to the children of Israel. But we understand that the words B'nai Yisrael can be also understood as B'nai Yisrael the builders of Israel. And so you, as the teacher of our children, are the one who will help to build the future. And that's why I wanted you to hold this Torah scroll, because this Torah scroll fulfills the mitzvah of this congregation that 14 years ago, the congregation over the course of a year in celebration of the congregation's 30th anniversary, wrote this Torah scroll. Members young and old, children in every 
grade in our religious school, the youngest of who today are in college, um, wrote this Torah scroll. It took us a long time, but we honored the tradition that each person in his or her lifetime should fulfill the mitzvah of writing a Torah scroll. You are the sixth rabbi to serve this congregation, as Cantor Boyle is the third cantor to serve this congregation. But in the midst of that rabbinic and cantorial leadership has been a lay leadership and a commitment of the laity of this congregation to be builders of Israel, the children whose children will continue to be here. May you be blessed, may the cantor be blessed as the beautiful team that you are to continue to teach Torah and most importantly, to bring peace. It is my honor to bless you in the tradition of our people. May God bless you and keep you safe. May God make you strong and may all those who come to know you find peace in their lives and tranquility in relationship to you. May God bless you always. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Michael's next. Okay. I'll, I'll introduce you. Or do you want to introduce yourself? I realize I didn't ask you. That would be awesome. Thank you very much, Rabbi Summer. That's a rare privilege for a rabbi to have the support and partnership and confidence of two emeriti uh, who are in the community, who have the congregation's best interests at heart and who, uh, who care so much for, for all they have built and all the relationships they have built throughout the years. It's a deep honor. Thank you. And it's similarly an honor to invite to the pulpit Rabbi Michael Friedman, a senior rabbi of Temple Israel in Westport. Rabbi Friedman will always be a very special rabbi to me because he was the first rabbi who gave me a shot. He was the rabbi who, uh, who hired me out of rabbinical school, gave me a chance to uh, build my rabbinate, to have a chance to explore all of the dimensions of rabbinic responsibility from teaching and sermonizing to pastoral care and all of the needs that we don't necessarily know arise, that will arise in a community, yet sometimes do. And, uh, and so it's a special privilege to have him here and, uh, and it will be a privilege, Rabbi, to hear from you as you have shared your Torah with me over these last few years. I know that everyone else is looking forward to getting to know you a little bit too, so please. Friends, it's a bit emotional for me to be here tonight for a number of reasons. First, there are those of us in this room who have devoted our careers and devoted our lives to the continuity of Torah, to the vitality of the Jewish people. And we bear the titles of cantor and rabbi. Seeing this Torah, that was lovingly inscribed by this congregation, they passed to its next rabbi, named as the sixth in the history of this congregation among the people of Israel. This is not a symbolic, this is a literal, literal embodiment of all that we devote ourselves to. So thank you all so much for inviting me to be part of this joyous and momentous occasion. I want to acknowledge the presence of Rabbi Hesh Summer, your Rabbi Emeritus, and the virtual presence of your other Rabbi Emeritus, Stacy Offner. 
Wow, how fortunate are you guys to have two rabbis emeriti? Rabbi Offner and I have had the opportunity to work together closely in recent years. So it's extra special for me to be here on this evening. And I want to acknowledge the most important rabbi here tonight, and that is Rabbi Susan Landau Moss. <laughs> That's not a joke. I have plenty of jokes later. That is not a joke. Some of you already know, and others will soon discover that she is an excellent rabbi, possessed of wisdom and insight and compassion and many more wonderful qualities. And she's also, of course, the spouse of your new rabbi. And in that particular role, I would suggest that all of us, all of you owe her great appreciation. As you know, a rabbi's life is filled with meetings that stretch on late into the evening, a whole host of weekend commitments, unexpected illnesses or deaths, so much more. And the weight of all of this is borne with grace and patience and understanding by the rabbi's spouse. So as we celebrate and install Rabbi Danny Moss this evening, I would ask us also to celebrate and appreciate Susan for the role that she will play in the life of this congregation and the life of the Moss family as well. So as some of you know, this is not my first time here at TBT. I was a 20 year old junior at Yale and my friend Adam had taught in the Hebrew school here the year before. He was about to graduate and he said, you know, you should teach there. You'd really like it. And he was exactly right. Marsha Geringer, who many of you know, took a chance on me. She provided gentle yet clear guidance. And she provided a lot of patience. My co-teacher was a gentleman named Jeff Coran. Some of you may know that name. No, I'm getting a lot of blank stares. Jeff was the commander of a US nuclear submarine based at Groton. Boy, was I intimidated. <laughs> and boy, was I clueless. So if any of your children or my students, or if any of you yourselves were my students and have now grown up, let me take this opportunity to apologize. <laughs> I surely recall the warmth present in the building that I now understand is undergoing significant renovations. I remember the buzz and the enthusiasm. I remember Rabbi Summer, your Golden Bagel Award competitions in the sanctuary. And as an example of how clueless I was, you would ask questions of all the students and they were entirely, you wanted them to get the right answer and they were entirely knowable. And I remember there was one time you asked about um, any, some particular biblical figures, parents. I can't remember who it was, but it was, you know, Abraham or Moses, somebody who, you know, and all my kids looked at me, what's the answer? What's the answer? I was little, I was like, I don't know. They're like, no, no, really, really. Who, who is it? What's the answer? What are their names? What are their names? Really guys, I don't know. Oh, come on, come on, just tell us. No, I, 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 I really, I was like that. I was like this far ahead of the students most of the time, except for some other times. <laughs> but truly this is a sweet moment of return. When Rabbi Moss told me about a year ago that there was a wonderful congregation in Madison, Connecticut to which he had sent his resume 
And his application, I responded, oh yes, I know TBT. And as he kept me informed of the interview process from the first meeting to the callback to the second interview, et cetera, et cetera, it seemed as the process evolved that this truly was an opportunity for an ideal match. We were blessed to have Rabbi Moss as our assistant and associate rabbi for four years at Temple Israel of Westport. And now on behalf of our board of trustees and our entire congregation, we are simply thrilled that he has become Temple Beth Tikva's next rabbi. Now, knowing Rabbi Moss's love of Torah and knowing Rabbi Moss's planfulness, I'm sure that it is not a coincidence that we are holding this installation on Parashat Lech Lecha, is it? Uh, I was really intentional, yes. That's... <laughs> Actually, if anybody was intentional, it's more <laughs> that, that is exactly the right answer. Because, you know, the next time you're uh, officiating a wedding and it's just about to rain and then the clouds part and the sun rays come down and people say that rabbis can control the weather, your answer should be, absolutely. Anytime I can throw you a softball. There you go. Anytime. <laughs> I thought I was throwing it to you. <laughs> okay. So what could be better? Lech lecha. Abram is told by God, go forth from the place you grew up to this new place, this new land that I'm going to show you. What is this night, if not a celebration of a new journey into the unknown? And for Abram, our ancestor and Sarai, if the land of Israel was unknown to them, which it surely was, the relationship into which they were about to enter was even more so. It took courage and faith for Abram and Sarai to follow the call, God's call, to head into the unknown. It takes courage and faith, Rabbi and Susan, Rabbi Susan, to uproot your lives and to come here for the next stage of your journey. Not just faith in the physical structures and the land and the town, but in the relationships, more importantly, in the relationships that you will build here. You are up to the task. And so is this congregation. And on this occasion of Rabbi Moss's installation, I am reminded that our late teacher, Rabbi Aaron Pankin, Zichron Oliv Racha, of blessed memory, used to comment that this was such a strange practice that we have. He would ask, how exactly does one install a rabbi? Is a rabbi like a kitchen appliance? Does a rabbi come with an instruction manual? And if so, which parts are covered by the warranty? <laughs> with all due respect to Rabbi Pankin's sense of humor, which was unique, tonight we should ask ourselves exactly his question. How does one install a rabbi? Yes, by passing this Torah, that was beautiful, I loved that. And by gathering musicians and artists from throughout the community, this is gorgeous. And a welcoming like this, that is just, this is also my first Shabbat in the barn, by the way. This is awesome, awesome. First, install him with confidence. When Rabbi Moss first arrived at Temple Israel, it took me only a few weeks to realize that his skills at that point in his rabbinate far surpassed mine. Many of his skills still surpass mine. He is steeped in the very best of reformed Jewish tradition. He grew up at URJ camp, loves the music of our movement. He's committed to rigorous learning and study and devoted to the principle of informed choice. 
He understands that innovation is, a, is at the heart. Innovation is at the heart of Reform Judaism. And he knows that justice is the core of all of Jewish life. And that justice needs to be pursued through principles, not through politics. Thus, he is ideally suited to lead this congregation at this time. And second, install him with compassion. Any senior rabbi does not start out as the rabbi that he or she will develop into. Rabbi Moss has told me how helpful the executive committee here has been, how committed and constructive the lay leadership and board have been. And this goes for the entire congregation. He told me people are willing to do a whole lot, even when circumstances are not easy. Clearly this is a special congregation today, just as it was 25 years ago. So continue to help your rabbi grow. And compassion is particularly important because as I often remind our staff at Temple Israel, change is the only constant. We are still in a continual COVID transition. TBT has an ongoing and I'm told oft delayed construction project. And obviously there's this small matter of a rabbinic transition too. Not so small. Fortunately, this is a congregation that knows that it needs to adapt and innovate and knows that it has the right leader and leaders to shape the next phase of this congregation's life. So these are my messages to all of you on this evening. Install your rabbi with confidence and install your rabbi with compassion. It's also traditional for an installing rabbi to offer a few words of advice or counsel. And so Rabbi Moss, my two pieces of counsel are each illustrated by a story. I intended the installation of a minister friend a few years ago and the installing speaker gave what I immediately recognized was the perfect advice for an occasion such as this. She said simply, love your people. So Rabbi Moss, love your people. They're very lovable. <laughs> love them when the going is good and when the going is rough. Love them through celebrations and through mourning. Love them when they're showing up. And love them when they're not. Love them when they're calling you. And love, love them when you can't get them to call you back. Love them when they're praising you. And love them when they're fetching. Love them because each of us who joins a congregation does it, yes, because of our love of Jewish life, but also because each of us wants to be seen and known. And we want to be part of something greater than ourselves, a group of people who share values, commitment, and connection, and who act together to improve our world. The rabbi, love your people every day. And the second story is a story told by Rabbi Jerry Davidson, my childhood rabbi, who shared this story at my first rabbinic installation. And it's guided me ever since. A woman approaches the counter at Zabar's. She points to an entire side of smoked salmon and says, I'll have some of that smoked salmon. The counter guy says, 
how much do you want? She goes, well, just start cutting. So he slices, shows it to her. Keep cutting, she says. He slices some more, shows it to her again. Keep cutting. Now the lox is piling high. He's almost reached the middle of that side of salmon. The lady goes, okay, that's good. Now I'd like the next three slices. <laughs> Our job as rabbis is to give our people the middle three slices of Jewish life. The entirety of our tradition, Torah, sages, everything since, to distill it down and help all of us live better lives. Because our goal here at each and every one of us is not just to be more Jewish, but to be more human. Judaism is, our, is simply the means to our end, the tools we use to get there. Judaism gives us the gift of the pause and reflection and rest of Shabbat. The value of tzedakah that righteousness is defined by generosity. And a society is defined by how we care for the least among us. Judaism teaches us the infinite value of every single human life and equal justice for all. The point of Jewish life is not necessarily to light candles or say, any particular words in this Sidur. It is to provide for the ineffable yearnings that ultimately make life worth living. We are here to experience awe and wonder, to seek hope and purpose, and to find community and connection. Abraham and Sarai were told to go forth to a new land and to a new relationship. And they were told to be a blessing. So Rabbi Moss, as we celebrate you and install you as this congregation's sixth rabbi, be a blessing. Be a blessing first to your family. Be a blessing second to this beautiful community. And be a blessing third, as Abram was charged, to the entire world. May it be so. I don't know about the snapping thing. Is this a thing we've always done or is this a new thing? Okay. See, I'm still learning. Wow. It's difficult to do justice to feelings such as I am experiencing and I have felt this evening in words, but I will try. Foremost, of course, is gratitude. I've always been taught that gratitude is about a subject in search of an object. So I'd like to sh share a few thank yous. First, to Marlene Schwartz, who spearheaded every element of my transition into our congregation, including quarterbacking this entire evening. 
Thank you very much. And to the entire subcommittee who has done so much work to make this beautiful evening possible. Thank you also to our staff, to Kim. I know you were here like all day setting this up, to Bonnie. I'd like to say thank you also to Karen Goldberg, the other co-chair of the search committee. And to, of course, all of the thoughtful individuals who served on it. To Stu and Lauren and Gary, I know you're all in different parts of the room for your logistical support, your beautiful and unique liturgy, professional planning of this evening. I wanna say thank you to Sarah Mervine for your friendship and partnership, your capable leadership of our congregation. Thank you to Cantor Boyle for the stirring music and for your everyday partnership for learning new music at the drop of a hat just to make it a special evening, even when you're starting off a religious school in a pandemic. <laughs> to all of our musicians, thank you. To our teens who are here and our volunteers who gave a beautiful offering in this service in so many ways. To our tech support team, thank you very much, Corey. Thank you very much to Haida and Susie and to Don behind the scenes. Thank you very much to Rabbi Friedman for being here and giving of his time and wisdom to help this moment be so special and help usher me into this transitory moment in my life when you were such an important presence in the last season of my life. And of course, as I said to Rabbi Offner and Summer for your support, for your partnership and friendship. And finally, and I know I've forgotten someone, so I'm so, so sorry. I really do appreciate you all. Uh, to my family and friends who came uh, far away and endured uh, O'Hare International Airport to be here. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, to everyone here, to everyone who is joining us on Zoom, whether we have already become acquainted or not, whether we do not know one another but will, thank you for joining us this evening. And most of all, looking beyond this evening, Thank you for the special privilege of being your rabbi. When I first addressed our congregation from the Bima more than three months ago, I acknowledged that though my time here had formally begun, perhaps, you likely did not yet feel that I was TBT's rabbi, and that perhaps TBT did not yet feel like my congregation. Well, three months or so into my tenure, I hope that we are building toward that together. So far, we've made it through a lot, right? A rabbinic transition, a couple of major hurricanes slash tropical storms, an ongoing building project, and our second High Holy Days as a congregation in a global pandemic, just to name a few. And yet, despite all of this, perhaps you're still looking at me today and feeling that Maybe perhaps I am not fully your rabbi yet. And I have to say, I still understand. Because, and here's the because this time, there's a major difference between a title and a role, between being a rabbi and being your rabbi. The title, such as it is, is bestowed after a period of learning and commitment. But the role, the role of a rabbi, that is earned over time. My teacher, Rabbi Friedman, taught to me long ago that the most meaningful kavod harav, the most meaningful honor that a rabbi can get, is that which is built every day, slowly, through service, through trust and presence. I haven't built that up yet. We do not yet know each other that well yet. And so, all the more so, I am humbled tonight by the special station with which you have entrusted me. And I hope that over time, I may be worthy of that trust. I hope that many of you feel that I have begun to get to know your family and our congregation. I look forward to deepening those relationships as time goes on. People still come up to me sometimes and ask me, what drew you to our congregation, Rabbi? I think maybe they're afraid I might leave. I tell them, don't worry. I always say it with a smile. I knew from my first conversation, I tell them, my first conversation with the search committee, 
that I wanted this job. Even though it was on Zoom. No offense, Zoom. We love you, Zoom. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you. But even though it was on Zoom, and believe me, interviewing for a job and interviewing for a rabbi are just on the list of the things that are unusual about this pandemic year, but we did it. And through that first Zoom call, I could discern so much. The values that initially drew me to TBT are so strong, are so clear, that saying yes was one of the easiest decisions of my life. With your permission, I'd like to briefly share a few reasons why. Reason one, the pioneering spirit. We were talking outside about the Wells Fargo wagon and the pioneers rolling into town. One of my clues that this is a special place, and by this, of course, you know what I mean, although this is also a beautiful place. One of my clues that TBT is a special place came about 15 minutes before this year's Rosh Hashanah service, when a gorgeous vase of flowers perched immediately next to our beautiful ark tumbled and crashed to the ground. And of course, nobody knew where the venue's staff or mop were. Instantly, our TBT folks jumped into action, crouching down in their holiday best with cocktail napkins to wipe up the mess, water and earth and flowers strewn about just moments before the service was to begin. Nobody asked any of them to act. They just did. You just did. Actually, I see many of you here. I'm not going to embarrass you. But I remember. I remember those of you who ran all the way around to the building to find more napkins. We learn in the Torah about the building of the Mishkan, of the desert sanctuary, which our ancestors would carry with them along their journeys, and which they constructed from the gifts of all people, says the Torah, asher yid benu libo, of any person whose heart moves him or her to give voluntarily. It is this spirit of volunteerism, of rolling up our sleeves and pitching in together, that lies at the heart of this congregation. Perhaps it harkens back to the small chavura that first met in living rooms in the 1970s to imagine Jewish life on the shoreline. Perhaps this is the attitude that led noted historian Rabbi Malcolm Stern to call our founding members Jewish pioneers in Connecticut. In Israeli consciousness, in modern Israel, the idea of chalutziut, of the chalutzim, the pioneers, is such a strong foundational mythology to build the can-do attitude and self-determination that Israel is famous for, Gesundheit. And I believe that spirit is very much present within this community. I hope we can continue to nurture it because there is a, just a tremendous sense of humility in that. We came here, we built this, you built this, and now we can build something together. Reason two, a culture of chesed. Something that shone brightly and very clearly to me early on in the interview process is that people here really like each other. I know, don't sound so surprised about it, but it's actually not something to be taken for granted. It might sound so simple, but it's actually quite remarkable. The sense of common purpose and mutual respect and just admiration for each other. This comes through, my friends. It comes through in those Zoom search committee meetings. It comes through in our board meetings, even again on Zoom. It comes through in the smiles in the parking lot and the hellos in the hallway and in the way that we show up for one another in times of bereavement and in times of need. This is an unusually strong sense of chesed in this community. I dare to say that Rabbi Friedman also noticed that in his story about coming to the hubbub and the buzz and the positivity in this place. At TBT, folks come here to care for each other and to be cared for in turn. And I use the word chesed because I think it's a perfect Hebrew word that conveys multiple meanings. It means something like loyalty, and it also means something like love. And chesed not, comes not from some sort of an external obligation, but rather an abiding sense of mutual responsibility 
uh, I would dare to say, covenantal sense of responsibility, a holy sense of responsibility. So when I say that TBT is a place of chesed, it means that we feel responsible for one another, for each other's well-being, and we express that care in both word and deed. A challenging year at this point, 18, 19 months, such as this one, requires great patience and perseverance. With circumstances like this and very difficult ones, you know what I've noticed? There's, and this is one more thing that I really wanna, wanna say. There's an unusually high level of listening here in this community. People really listen for what people are saying and the motivation with which they say it. It's not the, you know, waiting for the other guy to finish speaking so that I can finally jump in sort of listening. I mean, a caring sort of listening. It's like if this year has been one never ending puzzle to solve, I see Kim just sort of like shuddering as I say that, one never ending puzzle to solve, then we recognize as a community that none of us hold all the pieces to that puzzle. But that actually, when we really listen to each other, we might value that someone else has a piece to the puzzle that fits perfectly right in that moment. And I, again, I could share a few stories. I don't wanna embarrass anybody tonight, but I will tell you that it's not been one time that I've noticed this culturally, that we listen to each other because we care for one another, because we care what we are building together. That is incredible chesed. And finally, reason three. Beth Tikva is a force for good. Our congregational mission describes our commitment to positive change from the inside out. Tikkun Hanefesh on the one side, the pursuit of excellent character on an individual level, and Tikkun HaOlam on the other side, the pursuit of a better world. For me, this is an essential answer, as Rabbi Friedman said, to the question of why religion should still be relevant to us today. Why should we be Jewish in 2021? If Judaism ultimately does not lead us to become better versions of ourselves, it has not served its purpose. If Judaism has not helped shape a better world through our hands, it has not lived up to its ethical mandate. Since I've come here, you have shown me so many things already. How to welcome the stranger, feed the hungry, care for those in need. You have jumped in to welcome a refugee family as our people have so often sought welcome and acceptance being refugees ourselves so often throughout our history. You have demonstrated your commitment to Menschlichkeit and the concern that you show for one another. If you'll excuse the cliche, it is clear that TBT is a place where character counts. Susan and I knew this early on, and she could probably tell you after those first Zoom conversations, I said, these feel like my people. This is a place that I want to be. Elie Wiesel, who was not a rabbi, but somebody who understood Judaism and the rabbi's life very intimately, he teaches this. A rabbi is someone whose primary job is to convey information, to acculturate to the rhythms of religious life and practice. But then there's a Rebbe. A Rebbe. You know what I mean. A Rebbe. A Rebbe is a friend, a guide, a supporter, an inspirational coach, someone who cares about each of his or her students' spiritual journeys. A rabbi builds a community. A Rebbe builds souls. My friends, you have not just hired me to do a job. You have invited me into your homes, into your hearts, into your very souls. There is no greater privilege than that, I think. And I hope that throughout these years, I will serve you with integrity, with love. I promise to love you. And in time, I hope that you will begin to think of me as your rabbi, but also as your Rebbe. I have no doubt that together we will accomplish many great things. Thank you and Shabbat Shalom, everybody.
man, it's hard to follow a bunch of rabbis, right? I mean, <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, we're mostly going to give a, a little pledge, but before we do, I, I just want to say, if I've learned anything in this past year and a half, I've learned what a difficult job it is to be a rabbi. It is truly amazing. Um, and things that you might not really realize, you're, you're a counselor, you're a teacher, sometimes you're offering comfort, sometimes you're offering advice, a lot of times you're fixing the Zoom and planning the next, how are we gonna do this You know, with the technology? It is not an easy job. And finding someone for that job is also not an easy job. And I have to say that this synagogue has done so well. I mean, look at our chain of rabbis. And I'm not someone who really believes that if you're good, good things happen. But I have to say there's a little bit of, it's hard to look at our chain and who we've had as our rabbis and not feel that there's a little bit of divine here. There's a little bit of something extra that TBT gets. Um, and you know, when when Rabbi Moss came and interviewed, I won't say Beshert, but it sort of felt like Beshert, here is our, you know, here is the next chain. And it, over these past three months, I've been so impressed. And I know how hard he is working. And I am so uh, I'm so filled with hope. And I'm so excited for our future here. I really, I, I can't wait to see what we're all gonna do together. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. I love the phones. Yeah. They have oh, it yeah. on their phones. I, I can't know. even read that. Good for I her. Know. I can't, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Melanie Siegel, president of our Temple Youth Organization, Salty BBYO. It's just so great to be with you all tonight at such a happy occasion in the BBYO way of using someone's initials to describe them in an introduction, we are welcoming our marvelous, motivated, majestic, memorable, and magnificent Rabbi Moss. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Thinking back to last year, Salty was asked by the Rabbi Search Committee to interview several rabbinical candidates. We are strongly opinionated teens who are not afraid to speak our minds. Our minds have nothing but remarkable things to say about you, Rabbi. In such a short time between JChat and our other interactions with you, we have become excited for the years to come with you as our mentor. We are so glad you are our rabbi and look forward to your support and teachings for our Jewish teens on the shoreline. Your enthusiasm and dedication mean so much to us. I'm already looking forward to Sunday's JChat. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now I think you're coming up. Maybe I should okay. put my mask on. You're coming up here too. And if you'll all open your programs, I think this is something we're all going to do together. Um, okay, so and we're going to, I'm sorry, we invite you all. We're going to start here, right? We now invite all assembled here, here in, in person and on Zoom, Zoom to rise. rise. You can rise and recite, and recite this responsive, responsive reading together. together. So this is all of us, congregation. In peer care mode, we learn the statement, make for yourself a teacher. Today we come together as a congregation to fulfill this statement for ourselves and for future generations of people Will you teach with us and learn with us, remembering that learning is a lifelong endeavor? I am thrilled to accept this role <laughs> as your teacher. At the same time, I also accept all of you as my teachers. From our rabbis in the Talmud, we learn that the study of Torah is equivalent to acts of kindness, hospitality to the stranger, visiting the sick, escorting the dead, intention in prayer, and bringing peace between people. I accept and welcome with honor my ritual role in the life of this congregation. As our rabbi, will you care for us in times of need and celebrate our joys with us? Will you accept our shortcomings? Offer us gentle guidance and listen to us with love. I affirm my pastoral role in the life of Temple Beth Tikva. 
and as our commit to the struggle for justice and compassion, responding to the call for deepening the love. I accept the responsibility to lead us as together we all pursue Tikkun Olam. And the members of the Sikha of Madison, Connecticut, prepare to share the sacred responsibilities of a congregational life with Rabbi Moss. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should come closer to the microphone. I pledge my dedication to Temple Beth Tikva and to all of its members. We, the community of Temple Beth Tikva, welcome you, Rabbi Tikva, to serve as our rabbi. We hereby affirm our sacred covenant with you. Speak the truth to us in love. Nourish our spirits. Help us to embody the change we wish to see in the world. Lead us in creating a community where justice and compassion flourish. With confidence and humility, I joyfully accept the responsibility of being your rabbi. Your trust inspires me to bring all that I can to this congregation and to serve you with integrity, commitment, and love. Together, let us embrace the work of this congregation. Let us care for one another, create a community of holiness, and work for a world of wholeness. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. So special. So special. Thank you. You're the best. I think we can probably all have a seat now. Although again, I don't really know. And I just wanna thank Lauren Sturman for, for beautifully crafting that, that liturgy. That's what I meant when I said we have some liturgists in our congregation. Thank you. Oh, and, and Marlene, oh, you worked on it together. Thank you so much. <laughs> this beautiful evening is a gift to all of us and to you. And it's the beginning of your journey, your journey with TBT. So on behalf of the congregation and our welcoming committee, something for you, a gift to remember this day when you use it, you think of, of this beautiful evening. I most certainly will. Thank Mazel you so time. much. Thank you so much. That's very special. Thank you so much. And we join together as one congregation for the Sheikh Yanu. to say that if you step outside of this service tonight without a heart full of joy, you just weren't paying attention <laughs> because this has been such a marvelous, special evening. Um, we'll conclude our service beginning with Aleinu L'Shabeach now, um, page 586. We invite you to please rise. Aleinu <laughs> Latet gula yosef breshit shelo asanu kegoye aratzon melo samanu mishpachot adama shelo sam chalkenu kahem bekor aleinu kechol hamonam va'anachnu koreim u'shachavim u'modim l'ifnei melech mothei hamlochim ha'kadosh baruch page 591 
have a seat. As our hearts turn to memory, I'd like to share this poem or an excerpt from a poem, a beautiful poem by Hanna Senesh, who gave her life as a Hungarian paratrooper for the Jewish people, for the state of Israel, and had a way in her poetry of capturing the essence of the spiritual experience, the experience of awe, in which we feel both so large and so small, all at the same time. And she wrote these words. There are stars above, she says, so far away that we only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways that we remember. And I'm sure that on a beautiful night like this, being out here in the country, looking up at the stars on our way out, we'll certainly be sharing a moment of memory for someone we have loved and lost. As a congregation, we acknowledge those who have passed away in recent days and also at this season in time gone by. In the period of Shaloshim, we think of Gary Widlitz, husband of Pat, and David Ferreira, friend of Shelley Capozzi. As I read your loved one's name for yard site, please feel free to stand up if you are comfortable doing so. Doris Schulman, Terry Firestein, Bruce Gordon, Elizabeth Kelly, Florence Rosine, Sam Spiegelman, Harold Gessner, Sidney Maxson, Betty Richter, Fred Rosenblum, Alexander Gordon, Shim Paley, Helen P. Mandel, Howard Bland, Simon Feingold, Israel Sherry, David Spear, and Joseph Sammartino. There are others we should add to our prayers at this time. I would invite us to share them aloud if we're comfortable doing so. I don't know where I put my mask. And those on Zoom, feel free to add the names to the chat as well if you wish at this time. As we hold our loved ones in our hearts, I invite us to rise in solidarity, if it's comfortable doing so, for the words of Mourner's Kaddish, page 598. Amen. <laughs> Ose shalom bim ramav, huya ose shalom, aleinu ve'alko Yisrael. May the source of peace bring peace into the hearts of all who mourn on this day as we together say, Amen. Ose 
Have a seat. I'm happy to invite Sarah Mervine to come back for the announcements. Do you want to give the announcements? Did you know you were giving the announcements? Are you giving the announcements? And if you do, you know, something always gets dropped in the line of communication when there's big things going on. So I apologize. I think I know what the announcements are. Wait, wait, I, I always have a backup, Sarah. Don't you know me yet? I'm usually the one who always has a backup. Okay, but there might be a couple of, you know. All right, all right. All right. Okay. So I'm supposed to say Shabbat Shalom. I could have, do, could have done that. And welcome to everyone, and especially to all of our guests here this evening. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, you can join us for Jewish Mindfulness and Meditation at 8 a.m. I always push this, but I'm telling you, if you haven't done it, give it a try. Um, but it is 8 a.m. Uh, and then that's followed by Torah study at 9 a.m. And that Torah study is led by Canner Boyle. Those links are in your inbox. Um, be sure to check your inbox to see how you can help our Afghan family refugee resettlement. We're working on that now. And there are many ways that you can help as we assist a family looking to settle into their apartment. Your, gen your generosity in giving tzedakah to this cause or volunteering in one of the many other potential areas of need will be much, much appreciated. Uh, you can speak with Tina, who I think is here tonight, um, or, or John Katz for more information. Um, women of TVT, remember that Kol Ami will be having Israeli dancing led by Jen Silva. If you came to Simchat Torah, you got a little taste of that. Um, and Jen is doing it again for you on Sunday, October 24th. Um, this says, sell it a bit. <laughs> it really was fun, honestly. And I'm telling you, my kids will tell you, I I'm not the person who's very good at that. And still, it was a lot of fun. How's that for the... Do you know about the fourth wall? <laughs> um, please RSVP to Susan Lurie. Um, and those invitations are in your inbox. Next Friday, October 22nd, Shabbat services will be in person at Camp Laurelwood. We're going to start there again. Um, that'll be in Madison at 630. Um, as always, services will still always be available on Zoom. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Wow. All right. Well, normally we would do Kiddush now, but we already did it. And so, um, yeah, let's go to, to some singing because start with song, end with song, um, way to bring the joy out into our evening. So what's on the menu tonight, Cantor? Uh, page 625 for Adon Olam. Oh, I know that one. <laughs> I don't know long, I share my love, but tear him cold. It's your neighbor, the eight nassa, the half so cold. As I'm a shimani, I don't know long, Tell 
pilgrim cold, yet soon he brought the ignis out, behef so cold, as I malak shimoni kra'adon olam. Please rise for a final word. Dear God, our people know what it is like to set out on a new journey. Just as our ancestors of Ram and Sarai did so many generations ago. And so as this beautiful community and this beautiful rabbi <laughs> set out on a journey hand in hand, we ask God's blessing upon all of you, upon Temple Beth Tikva, on Rabbi Moss and his family, God, give us all strength for this journey. Please, God, bless us all with peace. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Amen.